Welcome back everyone, Houston Map Prep here with our second example for area inside of polar curves with integration. So here we want to find the area inside of the curve r equals 4 sine 2 theta. I've got my graph here, so we have four petals on this flower shaped graph. I've got my formula here, the area equals 1 half the integral from alpha to beta function of theta squared d theta. I'm going to go ahead and use the symmetry on this graph, so I'm going to define these two points here, one at the pole and one at the farthest point on the pedal. And I'm going to think about traveling from here along the curve counterclockwise out to here. We're going to fill that space, which is going to be half a pedal, with sectors, many, many sectors, more than I've drawn here. We use our integral with this symmetry, so I'm finding the area of half of one pedal, and then if you think about how many half petals am I having in this graph, there are actually eight half petals because there's four whole petals. So I'll take my area that I get from this and I'll multiply by eight. Let's go ahead and write all of this down. Remember that I need to multiply by eight because I'm using the symmetry here. My formula is one half integral from alpha to beta. We'll figure out those bounds in a second. Uh, so here we'll have four sine of two theta all squared d theta, that's my function of theta, my r squared. We'll need to find alpha and beta. So if this is my going from here over to here counterclockwise, this is my alpha here, and this is my beta over here. So what is my alpha? Well, what's true about alpha? It's at the pole, and that's when r is zero. So we could figure out when is r zero and find that. So let's go ahead and set our r equal to zero. So that would be 4 sine of 2 theta is equal to 0. Dividing both sides by 4 still gives you that sine of 2 theta equals 0. And then where is that first true on the unit circle? Well, that would be at sine of 0, right? So 2 theta needs to be 0. And I think we can definitely still say then that theta needs to be zero, right? So this is at an angle of zero, even though you can't really tell because it's on the pole there. So our alpha is zero. We're integrating from zero to something. If you look at beta, you'll notice it's the farthest point out. You can tell maybe that this is a radius of four, if you notice my labels here. So we want to figure out when r is four for the first time, right? Here r is zero, and then I keep getting bigger and bigger values for r, and this is the first time that r is four on my graph. So after zero, the first time we have a radius of four. So let's go ahead and set our r equal to four. That will give us four sine of two theta is equal to four. Dividing both sides by four, that will give us sine of two theta is equal to one. And now ignore the two theta just for a second here. Um, sine is one. Where's the first time on unit circle that sine is one? Well, that's at pi over two, right? So whatever angle is in my sine function must be pi over two. So in other words, two theta needs to be the angle pi over two to make that true. Dividing by two or multiplying both sides by a half to solve for theta, you'll get that theta is equal to pi over four. And that's probably what you expected. Now these can be deceiving sometimes in polar. You think it's pi over four and maybe it's not. So it's always best to check and actually solve for these things. So we will have integral from zero to pi over four. Let's go ahead and do some simplifying here. So eight times a half will give me four outside of my integral, zero to pi over four. Now when I square this, I square the four and the sine two theta. So I'll get 16 sine squared two theta d theta, and I could bump the 16 out also if I want, right? So we could go ahead and say 4 times 16, 64 integral 0 to pi over 4, and then sine squared 2 theta would be the only thing left in there d theta. Now this is an even power of sine and cosine. This is going to be pretty typical uh, using these double angle formulas identities because we're going to be squaring r, squaring our function of theta often. So it's very likely that you'll end up with a sine squared or a cosine squared inside of your integral. So the double angle formula for sine is going to be 1 minus cosine of double the angle. Now we already have two theta, so double that angle is actually going to be four theta over two d theta. And just so I don't have to deal with fractions, I'm going to go ahead and bump the one half out. Everything's over two, so I can do that. So we'll say 32 out here, integral from zero to pi over four. And then we just have one minus cosine four theta, and those are not so bad to integrate now.
Okay, let's go ahead and evaluate this. So we will get 32. The integral will be, if we're integrating d theta, 1 becomes theta. And then if we integrate cosine 4 theta, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, so we'll get sine 4 theta. But then, since we're doing the antiderivative, reciprocal of 4 comes out, so we actually get minus 1 fourth sine of 4 theta. And we'll evaluate that from 0 to pi over 4. Let's do some plugging in now. So we will get that our area is equal to 32 times. So plugging in pi over 4 first, I would get pi over 4 minus 1 fourth sine of, we have 4 times theta. So if you plug in pi over 4, you would get 4 times pi over 4. This would be sine of pi. And that is actually 0. So we get that there. Minus, when we plug in 0, plugging in 0 for theta would give us 0 there. Minus 1 fourth times sine of 4 times 0 would still be 0. So sine of 0, which is also 0. Looks like I get 0 everywhere there. Actually, the only place I don't get 0 is in this first term, right? So we get 32 times pi over 4, 32 over 4. That's going to give us an area of 8 pi inside of my entire graph that I had above. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. We've got one more example of area inside of polar curves as well as some additional examples of area between polar curves. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.